everybody. So, let us start this course on animal physiology. So, this is a 40 lecture module and we have divided the course into 15 different uh, components. So, just to start the course, let us talk about the different sections what we will be covering. We will start with introduction to physiology, cell and general physiology, we will be having two lectures followed by membrane physiology of nerve and muscle, which will constitute of three lectures, followed by talking about the heart, the pumping machine of our body, another three lectures. Then we will be talking about the blood circulation all over the body, which will cover another three lectures. Then we will be talking about the fluid purification machinery of the body, which constitute of kidney and some supporting organs, which will cover another three lectures followed by the structure of the blood cells and the immunity and the blood clotting, which will cover another three lectures. And then we will move on to respiration, which will cover another three lectures. And then we will talk about some specialized situation like aviation, the problem people faces while they are traveling at high altitude, space, deep sea diving physiology that will cover two lectures. From there, we will move on to the nervous system. There are two aspects of the nervous system we will be talking about, the general nervous system and the sensory physiology, which will constitute two lectures. And then, we will be talking about the special senses, which includes your eyes, ear, nose, tongue and all these things that will constitute another three sets of lectures. And from there, we will move on to the motor systems of nerve physiology and integrative neurophysiology, which will constitute three lectures. From there, we will move on to gastrointestinal physiology, which will constitute your whole digestive mechanism and the control system, which will constitute another three lectures. From there, we will move on to metabolism and temperature regulation, which will constitute two lectures. And <coughs> then, we will move on to endocrinology and reproduction, which will constitute three lectures. And then, we will conclude with a sports physiology and a sports medicine, which will constitute two lectures. And in sum total, we will have we will be having 40 lectures in this animal physiology module. And what I expect from this is, once we are done with the course, you should be aware about your own body and the surrounding and how we react. Let us take a simple example, what do I expect? We all go to the doctors and at times doctors gives us a prescription, they gives us certain medicine or sometime we go to a, go for check up of our heart and they ask us to do an EKG or ECG electrocardiogram and we see some traces. And most of us are kind of at the mercy of the doctor, whatsoever doctor says we believe it. We really never analyze what it meant, they recommend us our medicine, we take it. So, our objective will be that to understand about your body, about how things are happening, how your whole physiology machinery is functioning, this is what I expect after going through all these lectures that you should be able to analyze or sometime we hear in a sports medicine, people have taken certain drugs, which are sports uh, performance enhancing drugs. What really they do? Most of us do not have an answer. Okay? So, these are some of the issues, pertinent issues. In the modern day to day life, our lifestyles are changing. We need to understand our own body. Sometime we say we should do a yoga. What does that mean? how the yoga really helps, how it helps in physiology. All these different varied things we are going to deal in this course. So, before I get into the real course, so we will have the first two lectures we will be talking about. So, so this is the title of the course, we will have animal physiology. It is the story of our ourselves, how we function. So, the first topic, what I will be dealing here, which will be your topic 1 will be, the first two set of lectures will be introduction introduction to physiology. which includes cell and general.
physiology. This, uh, this is the first topic in which we will be discussing two lectures, I will be dealing on this. Okay. So, let us talk what really physiology is all about. Our body, whenever we look at our body. So, this is the head, these are the two arms, this is our face, we have the eyes, we look through our eyes and the rest of the body. So, this whole body acts like a coordinated machine. So, we think something and then we do something. Sometimes your heart is beating, we really do not think, the heart is beating on its own. The story of our own selves, the way the body functions, way everything functions falls under the purview of physiology. It is a machine and how this machine is functioning. Now, the first question arises, what are the components of this machine? So, let us ask the first question out here. So, <coughs> regarding this machine, our body, what it is made up of? That is the first question first question let me put it, body is made up of if we go down, if we burn the whole body it will lead to some of the elements which mostly our body is made up of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen traces of iron, maybe some other element like you know manganese, molybdenum and few other and of course, hydrogen. Okay. Our body is made up of elements. So, are the elements hanging out like that? It is not like really like that. So, the smallest functional unit of our body is called a cell what is a cell? Cell is an enclosed structure something like this, which has a membrane and it has a nucleus, which contains a molecule called DNA and outside this cell, there are several organelles. This is called the nucleus, these are the DNA or slash RNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid, cell membrane, you have mitochondria, you have something called endoplasmic reticulum, in short we put it as ER then you have something called S R sarcoplasmic reticulum likewise, but what this cells are made up of and how this self assembly has happened. So, if we look at nature, probably in a distant past when the earth was formed, the first probable reaction which took place is the different elements what we discuss about carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, iron and likewise these elements somewhere or other have self assembled. They have self assembled to form something called molecules, molecules like water H 2 S or of course, the sulfur, okay. oxygen C O 2 likewise this was the first self assembly of molecules, which lead to the formation of very simple molecules like our water, hydrogen sulfide, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen likewise. Now, even a bigger question come before this, how these elements have originated? There are several theories here, how the elements have originated. One of the theories is, there is something called a big bang theory. The, the theory which explains or tries to explain the origin of the universe itself. The big bang theory it is believed 
led to the formation of stars and these stars led to the formation of different elements which you talk about. So, we will not deal with this part, but this is how probably most of the elements have formed. And once these elements have formed, these elements, so if you look at it, assuming some way or other the elements have formed, these elements lead to the formation of small compounds that we just now discussed. Okay. Compounds like CO2, water, H2O, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen sulfide likewise, then FeS2, iron disulfide likewise. Okay. These compounds led to a self assembly process and probably form the first membrane like structure. What do you mean by membrane? It is something like this, say for example, there is one compound here, say we represent it by compound 1, compound another compound like this, compound 2. Likewise, compound 3 C 3 Mx C 4 C 5 C 6 C 7. So, they come close to each other and form something like a structure like this, a enclosed structure where there are lot of these components C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4, likewise, a enclosed structure. And this enclosed structure is the beginning of the first membrane structure compound 1, C 2, C 3, C 4, C 5, C 6, C 7, C 8, C 9, C 10, C 11, likewise and so forth. Okay. So, this was the probably the evolution of membrane. It is a still not clear how this first membrane has formed. There are theories which says the first membrane may have been formed of the first Membrane may have been formed of one of the very primitive compound called iron disulfide. There are a lot of contradictory theories on that. They say the first membrane was like you know iron disulfide molecules forming a membrane and which falls under iron sulfur theory of evolution. But whatsoever may have happened. These, this must have happened long, long time back in the evolution. So, once the membrane is formed, <coughs> the next thing was that it has to develop certain form of transport mechanism across it, something like this. These arrows are showing it has should have the ability to exchange fluids or any kind of nutrient from inside to outside. So, this is inside the membrane and this is outside the membrane. So, exchange of gases, fluids and minerals. This is how probably the first cell may have formed. The next step in this evolution process was individual cells, if these circles are individual cells, they came close to each other and started forming a self assembled structure, which we called. So, these are individual cells, cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, likewise C 4, C 5, C 6. C 7, C 8, C 9, C 10, they form something self assembly of self. Cells forming something called a tissue. Next step in it comes self assembly of tissues, self assembly of different 
tissues forming something called an organ and self assembly if I just represent self assembly as S A of organ making something called a system. So, as to summarize this it looks like this now we started with the big bank let us summarize it what I just now talked to you big bank origin of elements formation of compounds self assembly of compounds forming the membrane forming the rather the first membrane then this membrane forming something called a cell the first cell in the evolutionary soup these cells self assembled to form tissue tissue self assembled to form organ organ self assembled to form system and system self assembled to form a full organism which includes all different life forms like starting from human and animals and at the cellular level we have single unicellular organism they have single cell which includes bacteria some algae especially diatom okay these are single cell organisms okay and this also includes here the plants too they are also multicellular organism so in other words now you can classify it as plants animals microbes and within them you will have unicellular means they are having single cell multicellular animals are mostly multicellular plants could be unicellular having a single cell or multicellular this is how the life forms on earth survive and yet there are something within the microbes something like virus which are single particle. I would not call cell purposefully maybe at some point I will discuss why I am not calling them as cell. Okay. So, here what we will be discussing in this course is this part this is the regime which is part of this course animals we will be talking about multicellular animals and the machinery which governs it. So, in other words the governing dynamics of multicellular organisms. So, this is the part and parcel of this course where we will be starting to understand. So, with this brief background of explaining you how the cells may have formed. So, we have not gone in depth, in depth with any of the structures, but just to give you an idea how that looks like. So, if I start from here, so what is our body made up of? Again, let us summarize it made up of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, iron, and few other compounds, hydrogen. Then we talked about how the cell basic structure of the cell looks like. Then we talked about the different compounds, different elements which are formed, 
like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, iron, sulfur and they self assemble to form the different molecules like water, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Then the big bang theory, which talks about the formation of the stars and which eventually leads to the formation of elements. Then we talked about how the elements joins together from the compounds and then the self assembly and formation of the membrane, the first membrane. And this is the beginning of life form. Then from there we talked about how the different compounds come close, come together and form the first membrane likewise C 1, C 2, C 3, these are the different compounds coming close to each other. Then we talked about one of the most probable theories may be iron disulfide membrane or this is also called iron pyrite. One of the very, very primitive molecule which has formed, which is believed to have formed the first membrane. From there we talked about this membrane should have that, it should be a dynamic membrane. Okay. Dynamic semi permeable membrane. In other word, what do I mean by semi permeable? It means that not everything can go in and out of it. There are selective entry and exit. In other word, selective exit and entry of molecules. From there, we move on to how the different cells self assemble and form something called the tissue. From there, we talk about from the tissues, we move on to self assembly of different tissues forming the organs and self assembly of the organ forming the system. So, when we summarize the whole thing, cells and their self assembly of tissue and then we classify them into as unicellular and multicellular organisms. So, this is where we did the classification, you could have plant system, plant kingdom, then you have the animal kingdom, you have the microbial systems, you have the virus and here in this course, we will be talking mostly or everything about the animal systems. Okay. With this brief idea or the brief introduction, let us move on to our own cells which are all the different systems what we are going to study. Okay. So, what I will do now, I will draw a picture of human being and in this course, mostly we will be talking about the human systems. We will take human system as the reference and with respect to human system, we will be talking about the <coughs> any other say ruminant system like cows or buffaloes or anything or the tiger or anything and at times we will do some degree of comparison that where we differ from the cows in terms of the systems what we have, but our reference will be always human system. And uh, <coughs> for your knowledge, those who are interested from some extra studies, these are some of the books I will recommend you. One of the very good books are uh, textbook of medical physiology by A. C. Guyton. This is and of course, now it has two authors Johnny Hall is a W. B. Saunders company. There is another book which is very nice for those who love to have very nice pictures. There is the fundamentals of anatomy and physiology by F. H. Martini. This is a Prentice Hall publications and along the course as we will move through the course, I will recommend you some of the additional material which will help you to understand the <coughs> content that how where all additional uh, informations you can obtain. Okay. Now, so, after talking about this, we will be talking about, I will give you a general idea about our body structure and anatomy, which will help you to understand how we will be taking the course through. So, what I will do now, I will just draw a simple human being first, okay? just for your understanding. We will keep it simple. So, our body, if you look at it, it is governed by, we think whenever we think, we think from the, this is what we believe is the brain and this brain is controlling our rest of the body. So, this brain falls under the nervous system. This is one of the system we will be studying, brain plus how the brain is commanding to the rest of the body brain sends, receives and sends the signal from all over the body like this. All the signals 
goes to brain from all over the body along a tube and they all reach the brain. If I had to draw the brain in a real life, this is how it looks like. This is how your brain looks like. Okay. And this is the spinal cord through which all the signals are being carried to the brain likewise. Okay. Now you see these arrows are showing the information being sent to brain and the brain guides and asks us and these signals are brought back from different areas of the brain based on which we coordinate and we do all the actions in our body. Some of these functions are dependent on our thought process, some of these functions are not dependent on our thought process. They are exclusively governed by a autonomic unit or autonomous unit, we really do not think. Say for example, if you look at me, I can, I decide that am I, am I going to move my hand, this is in my control, fine, but I do not decide. If you look at here, my heart is beating, okay. I do not decide how my heart is beating that is completely under autonomic control. It is autonomous. I cannot control. I cannot say, oh, you know what? Your heart, you beat slow or your heart beat you fast. I cannot control it, but I can control this. This I can control. This motion I can control. Okay? I can do like this. I can do like this. All these things I can handle, but I cannot control this. Yet, both of these are controlled by your nervous system. So, a part of the nervous system controls, which are within your thought process. The other one is you do not have to think, it is already tuned, it is already programmed, it will happen like this. So, this is the one of the most fundamental system. So, next system, what we will be talking about in this in our body, if you look at it, is all those which are effector systems, which includes your. So, let me move on to the next day, again let me draw the human picture, that will help you to understand. Oh, just I missed something for you people, uh, is when I drew the brain. So, the nervous system what we will be discussing, we will be discussing at two level, we will be talking about the nervous system mostly consists of the brain plus the spinal cord. Brain and the spinal cord constitute your CNS or central nervous system and all the informations which are carried out from the other part of the body to the brain and wherever. Those falls under peripheral nervous system that is falls under PNS, peripheral nervous system. Okay. On top of that we will be discussing about sympathetic and I will come to that, we do not have to worry, because once we will we'll be picking up this topic sympathetic and parasympathetic system and we will be talking about the autonomic nervous system. system okay. This is all what we will be covering in the nervous system and the different modes to control different things. Okay. Next thing, what we will be talking about, let me again draw the picture that will help you to understand what we will be talking about is all these different organs which are taking care of stuff that falls under your muscular system. There we will be talking about nerve, nerve muscle contacts, where the nerves are con controlling your muscles, okay. they are regulating through different junctions. Okay. This is another system we will be talking about. Then we will be talking about something called another level system called endocrine system. So, body consists of three level of control mechanism. One is the nervous control, which is the highest control unit. This controls something called endocrine system, which control your secretion of hormones. And the third level, and in this we will be talking about different hormones, which are responsible for regulating your growth, puberty and several other reproductive system and all those things. 
and there is a third level of control. If this is control system 1, and if I consider endocrine system as control system 2, there is a third level control which is called immune system, which we will be talking in the part of immunity. This is the third level of control. These are the different level of controls, which you will be dealing at different part of the course. Then, we will be talking about, if you look at, we take the food. Okay. You eat the food, and the food goes through the digestive tract, likewise and at different level, all kind of food getting digested and everything. And then of course, part of the energy is being derived, <coughs> that falls under, we will be discussing about digestive system or this is also falls under gastrointestinal system. These are also under the control of the different nerves, which are controlling them. Another nervous control as well as these are the control system, nervous control and endocrine control. Okay. So, we will be talking about the digestive system. So, we started with the brain at the head, which is controlling along with the spinal cord, your central nervous system. Then we talk about all our muscles of our body, which are controlled, which are con continuously under the control of the nervous system. Then we move on to the digestive system. Okay. Then we will talk about some of the special senses. Second, we will talk about the special senses. Your special senses include your eyes, by which you see, which is part of the nervous system, your ears, by which you listen to the sound. So, eyes responding to light. These are very important, because that is what help you to survive. Sound, then you have your uh, tongue, which is taking care of your taste. Then you have your nose, which is taking care of your smell. these are, and then you have some of the skin senses and all those things, we will be talking in the special senses section. Okay. Then, we will from here, we will talk about the, this whole body is of different parts. So, look at it. So, like if this is a human being. So, this body continuously needs to be communicate from one point to another. In other word, there should be a continuous communication from here to here, here to here, likewise, here to here. The molecules have to travel all along the body and come back to the body. And this is taken care by a fluid called blood. We will be talking about the blood. Blood is the one which ensures that all along the body, everything flows and all the informations are being reached all over the body. And nutrition is being sent. So, this falls under circulatory system, but then you need a regulatory system, which will govern that the blood is being sent all over the body. That is taken care by, if you look at me, out here sits your heart, which pumps the blood all over your body. So, that is, this is where lies your, that vital organ, the heart. Okay. So, in this section, we will be talking about the control mechanism, which ensures that the blood travel all over your body. Okay. You take a drug, the drug has to flow all over your body, otherwise it does not make sense. Okay. So, we will be talking about the heart here. Okay. Then, who is controlling the heart? Again, we will come back to the nervous system, part of the nervous system, which is controlling your heart and part of the system by which nerve is autonomous. It controls itself all by itself. Okay. And then, in terms of the blood, we will have to talk about the, the structure of the blood cells. Structure of the, let us move on to the next slide, so that will help you. So, we will talk about the blood cells. In, the, in that, what we will be dealing with, how they carry nutrients. 
necessary nutrients. So, let me tell you here, we are living in an oxygen environment. So, all the part of the body needs oxygen. So, in order to ensure that all the parts of the body needs oxygen, we have to ensure that there should be some cell, which can carry oxygen to all your body. And the stuff, which carries oxygen in your body is falls under something called R B C. If you go to a doctor, they gives you a blood count, you know what, they will, will see. So, this R B C stand for red blood cell. So, remember we discussed about cell in the beginning, they are your oxygen carrier as well as every part of the body is involved in generating some, suppose something is working. So, it generates some waste, that waste has to be thrown out of the body. So, you need something, it is just like in your colony, okay. we dumped trash, we dump some kind of garbage. So, there should be a truck, which comes and takes the garbage out of the body, out of that colony. The same way within different parts of the body, like here, here, wherever, you know in my body. So, there are a lot of trash, which is or garbage in the form of carbon dioxide and other molecules, which are being generated. So, you need something, which carries it back and throws it out of the body. So, that is taken care by these RBCs, they ensure that the oxygen is sent to all parts of the body, to all parts of body and brings back CO2, carbon dioxide, it has to be thrown out of the body. Okay. So, this is what RBC does, yet there is another set of molecules within blood, which ensures which are called WBC, these are called white blood cells. These are the molecules, say for example, all of you have got a cut somewhere here, here other. Whenever you get a cut, after some days you see, there is a pus cells, which forms. Okay. What are those? Because, those are the ones, which are called white blood cells. These white blood cells ensures, they are involved in immunity. They helps you to fight against any kind of disease. Okay. Those are called immune cells of the body. Yet, there is another kind of cells. Whenever you get a cut, you see after some time, the blood stops flowing out of there, it heals. That is taken care by another set of cells within the blood, those are called platelets. They are involved in a process called blood clotting. So, all these different controls, which takes place when the clotting mechanism will be functioning, when the body has to activate its white blood cells, when the immunity has to be triggered on, these all falls under the umbrella of blood and its functions. So, if you look at blood, it is involved in carrying oxygen to different tissues, removing the waste from different tissues. There are white blood cells, which gets activated, when the body is fighting against any kind of pathogen. Yet, there is another kind of blood cells, which are called platelets. They are involved in ensuring, that whenever there is a cut in the blood vessel or anywhere, and blood is losing. So, it is just like, there is a pipe, it is something like this. If you just imagine, if this is a water carrying pipe this is a pipe, which is carrying water. Okay. So, think of it, this is a pipe okay. and think, this is the water is moving. So, what is moving like this. Okay. So, suppose there is an hole out here. So, for example, there is a hole. What? Oh, sorry. So, let me draw it and say for example, there is a small hole out here. So, what will happen? What will start coming out? Okay. So, you need to put something like this, to ensure the hole is being taken care of. Same way, suppose instead of this, 
what I do I just now imagine this is a blood vessel like this this is my blood vessels and these are the blood cells which are flowing through it this is a blood vessel in red and there is a some kind of a puncture like this in the blood vessel so what will happen blood will starts coming out and as soon as that happens there are a series of cells which are called platelets they will come here and these platelets will ensure clotting and repairing the blood vessel of blood vessels okay so this is what the platelet does okay now once we do with the heart and its control mechanism then we move on to the blood and everything. Yet, there are many other waste in the body, which needs to be taken care of. Not only carbon dioxide, there are several minerals, urea, uric acid and several other things, which has to be taken care of. And water has to be conserved inside the body, because there is continuously water coming out of the body. So, water conservation is essential, we cannot afford to lose a lot of water, otherwise we will suffer from dehydration, water conservation. Okay. This water conservation and getting rid of urea and uric acid is taken care by organ called kidney, which ensures your urine formation. and water conservation. This works in tandem with this kidney works in tandem with the endocrine system which will be talking about something called a renin angiotensin system. And within the kidney, so kidneys are something like a structure like this located at lower part of your body, I draw it through something like this. this okay this kidney smallest functional unit of kidney is called a nephron is the smallest unit these are specific structures which do filtration And several of these structures, thousands and thousands of these structures ensure this leads to urine formation. Okay. Once we <coughs> do with the urine, our next thing comes how we ensure when we take oxygen and all those things, oxygen and throwing out carbon dioxide. Of course, the blood is carrying them, but how we throw it, how we take. So, that is taken care by our lungs, which is involved in exchange of gases. Or in other word, gaseous exchange within our body. What this does? something like, so your lungs are like this. So, if this is your nose from here, it comes and the side view or if you have to have a front view, it is something like this. There are two lungs out there and this is called trachea through which the air is being pumped into our <coughs> into our lungs through the nose. This is your nose, and 
this is the side view of the lungs. You have two lungs, they ensure, give me one second, let us see where I am unable to, okay, 33. Okay. Let me redraw it for you guys, I will give you an idea about So, this ensures that we throw away the carbon dioxide and we take fresh oxygen all the time. And from here, this oxygen is being sent, this oxygen is sent to the heart through the blood and this heart then ensures that this is sent to the rest of the body. So, if I had to summarize the three different systems from where we are kind of getting rid of the things is that RBCs ensures oxygen and CO2 transport, lungs ensures oxygen intake and throwing away CO2, kidney which is excretory system ensures urea, uric acid and urine formation. And apart from it there are few other systems which ensures that we get rid of the necessary unnecessary things from the body and clean up our systems and take the necessary good stuff into our system. From there we will move on to, to see the digestive system. So, we all know we take food. Okay. Now, food has several component and we will talk about that very soon in the next lecture. So, we have to ensure that we absorb all the important component from the food and that is taken care by the digestive system. Absorption of important food component, we will talk about the component very soon, do not worry. So, that falls under the digestive system. So, this includes your stomach, intestine and we will talk about the structure, then you have the liver, then you have small intestine and large intestine and few other organs which ensures that our major thing out here is absorbing the food for energy, which is needed for functioning of our body. Okay. So, <coughs> All these different systems, what we talked about are the ones which ensures that the whole machine, this whole machine what we, what I drew in the beginning functions smoothly and the study of physiology is all about that. There is something which I have not touched is this among the different systems is called reproduction, because we have to ensure that from one generation to next generation we reproduce, we grow otherwise we will become extinct. So, that is the part which will be dealing with reproduction and endocrine system, endocrine regulation. From there, we will talk about two different situations which falls under 
the term called extreme physiology. In other word, all these studies what we will be doing, we will be doing in a normal condition, but say for example, we are at a high altitude, very high altitude, okay, which is like something like a very, very low oxygen and very, very low pressure. Okay. How our body is going to react to this? We will study this in high altitude physiology, because mind it a large number of our soldiers are stationed in places like Ladakh, Leh, Arunachal and all these places, where we really need to understand the physiology, because the body behaves in a very different way. Then we will be talking about deep sea physiology, where the pressure is very high. How, how our body reacts to this extreme situation. Then we will be talking about sports physiology. Especially, these are the situation where you have to exchange very fast exchange of gases is essential. Why some people are good runners, some are not. So, we will be talking all these things in that and on top of this we will be talking a little bit about space physiology. So, that will pretty much cover the whole spectrum of different systems what we will be covering in this and I believe by the end of it, people will have a fairly good idea whenever you see. Say for example, let us take up before we conclude this first lecture, let us think about it. what when you go to a doctor, they give you a, a something like a ECG trace, which looks like something like this you know. Most of us do not even understand what does that mean. I expect that you people will be able to after the course is over, you should be able to interpret this or we go to a doctor and doctor says you know your RBC count is this, your WBC count is this, your platelet count is this, some percentage value, some percentage value. Most of us do not even understand what does that mean. I expect that you people should be able to understand that what does that mean. Then we sometime go to a doctor and they give us a something called a liver profile you know or doctor ask you you know get a liver profile done, we do not understand it, what liver profile means. Okay. Then sometime doctors suggest you some drug okay, and we have no clue what that drug is talking about. So, these are the things what I expect once the course is over, you should, should be able to ask and on top of this another thing which will be touching upon the course about say for example, doctor says you know your parents need a pacemaker, what is a pacemaker really? where it fits in our things. We will be talking about this in the circulatory in the in the in the cardiac system. Okay. So, these are the things which I expect once the course is over. You should have a basic understanding about yourself and you should be able to answer these simple things or you should be able to understand about your own body. So, with this first lecture I am closing the first lecture and if I had to really go back again. So, this is where we started what our body is made up of and we move on to it is made up of different kind of you know sorry it we talked about the basic structure of the cell anyway we will come back to this. Then we talked about the big bang theory and the formation of elements and then we talk about the formation of different compounds and self assembly of the compounds. One second when we talked about the different compounds which are formed the compound and the self assembly and the formation of the first membrane, then evolution of the membrane, then we talked about one of the iron sulfur membranes out there, then we talked about the self assembly of the cells and the tissues, then we talked about the formation of the tissues to the organs to different systems, then we talked about the how the tissue organ systems are varying in plants, animals and the microbes and the virus. Then we talked about the nervous system which will be going in depth 
from there we talked about the, the three control units of the body nervous system, endocrine system, immune system and then we talked about how the nervous system is controlling the heart. We will be discussing about this and the blood and the circulatory system. Then we talked about the different roles of the red blood cells in ensuring that it is taking the oxygen to all the tissues and ensuring carbon dioxide out of the body. And we talked about the white blood cells, how they play a role in immunity. And we talked about the platelet, how they help in repairing the blood vessels which are damaged, the clotting mechanism. From there we talk about the kidneys, where the urine formation takes place to ensure that your body remains clean. Then we talked about how the kidney works in tandem with the endocrine system and we talked about the basic structure, the nephrons which are involved in the kidney. We talked about the lungs which we will be discussing how the oxygen and carbon dioxide is being exchanged in the body. And we talked about the gastrointestinal system where you have stomach, intestine, liver and all other organs which ensure how much energy we derive from it, absorbing all the energy molecules. Then we talked about the special physiology which includes deep sea physiology, sports physiology and space and high altitude physiology and all these things. And then what I expect that you should be able to understand what is a ECG trace, what is a liver profile, what is a blood profile and all these things. Thank you. So, we will start with the next lecture after this.